Well, hello everyone. <clears throat> so today we're going to do um, <clears throat> our lab activity, which um, is about comparing the fuel efficiency or the energy efficiency of different fuels, I should say. And for this, we're going to test um, four alcohols. The first, um, methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol. And what we're going to do here, the objective in this, uh, there's two objectives as you can see. Um, one will be to compare a theoretical um, heat of combustion of alcohol to an actual experimental value that we're going to measure here in the lab. And the second will be uh, using the class data, we're going to um, try to determine which fuel, which of the four alcohol is um, the best or has the, the most energy uh, measured in kilojoules per milliliter. So ultimately this is what we're trying to find is the amount of energy in kilojoules per milliliter of fuel uh, that we're going to burn. So <clears throat> I will use methanol and we're going to use just a kind of a basic um, setup like a tin can calorimeter. Um, there's a large can we're going to put the burner in here um, and then we're going to put some uh, water in this can and we're going to heat it up. And for the purpose of this experiment, um, our experimental value is not going to be very good. Um, probably aiming for about 50% of the theoretical value. And the reason for that is because we're only going to measure the amount of heat that the water receives in this can. And we're not going to calculate, for example, the amount of heat that the can receives, um, the amount of heat that the large can receives, the amount of heat that is lost in the air. Um, <clears throat> so we're only measuring a portion of, of the energy that is released um, by the fuel. So to do that, <clears throat> We are going to um, measure the mass of the water uh, that we put in the can. We're going to measure the initial temperature and the final temperature of the water, uh, the initial mass of the burner, and the final mass of the burner. So the idea here is that um, from the initial and the final temperature, we will be able to calculate the change in temperature, the mass of the water, and we also have the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So therefore having the mass, knowing the specific heat capacity of 4.18 joules um, per gram per degree Celsius, knowing the temperature change, we will be able to calculate the amount of heat that the water receives. We're gonna make a gross assumption <laughs> that the amount of heat that the water receives is equal to the amount of heat that the burn that the fuel has produced which of course is not true but um, and and with the initial and the final mass of the burner we'll be able to calculate the mass of the fuel that we burned and by using the density of the fuel um, we will be able to um, calculate the volume in milliliters and therefore we will have the energy and we will have the volume. So we'll be able to calculate uh, the heat uh, density of the, of the alcohol <clears throat> in kilojoules per milliliter. So let's begin. To start out, we're gonna measure the mass of the burner. So 86.15. This is the mass of uh, the burner before And we will also measure uh, the mass of the water that we're going to use in the experiment. So the mass of the water that we're going to use in the experiment. Uh, we're shooting for about, I was gonna say somewhere between 150 and 200 grams. So we'll go with 160.30 
and this is the mass of the water. Uh, you notice that the can had been zeroed out. So 160.30, this is the weight, uh, the mass of the water, uh, not including the can, of course. So the next part is going to be uh, to measure the uh, initial temperature of the water. And so we are at 21 degrees uh, Celsius. We're going to light the alcohol burner and Um, and we're going to uh, wait until we have a change in temperature of approximately 30 degrees. So that should bring us to about 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, we don't want to heat it up too much so that the water starts to boil because we don't want uh, to have to calculate like heat of evaporation and that kind of thing. And we also don't want to uh, change the mass of the water. And so we will just let this go continue measuring uh, the increase in temperature. We're already at 25 degrees now. And we're gonna let this go, like I said, until the water reaches about 50. <clears throat> Our temperature is at 50 degrees. Uh, we're going to blow out the burner. Um, and we're going to leave everything in place until we have a measure of the highest temperature reached because the temperature will continue to heat, to uh, increase a little bit. So we're waiting until we can see what the highest temperature is. So the final mass that, uh, the final temperature of the water was 51 degrees. And now what we have left to do is to measure um, the mass of the burner after so that we know how much fuel we burned 84.48 grams so now we have all of the information that we need and we can calculate the heat received by the water um, so let's do that right now so to calculate the heat <clears throat> that was received by the water, we're going to use um, delta H is equal to M, C, and delta T, where since this is the heat received by the water, uh, the mass will be the mass of the water, specific heat capacity of the water, and of course the change in temperature of the water. And we have all of this information um, from our data table. So the mass of the water that we measured in a can was 160.30. The specific heat capacity is a known constant, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then the change in temperature was 30 degrees Celsius from 51 minus 21. So 30 degrees Celsius. So when we multiply all this, we get 20,101. And so 20,101, this is in joules. We can divide this number by 1,000. And we're going to have 20.1 kilojoules. Again, this is the, the heat that was received uh, into the water. And... we are saying <clears throat> that this is equal to the heat 
uh, that is released by the fuel, by the alcohol. Now, of course, again, this is not accurate, this is not correct, um, but since the purpose of the lab is to compare um, the, the energy density of the four alcohol fuels, we're making the same assumption for all four fuels, and therefore the comparison is still, um, is still valid. The, the error is incorporated into all fuel calculations. And we know that our, rate, our um, uh, objective one, which was to compare to the experimental value, will be probably awful because of this assumption here. Um, now we need to calculate the volume of the fuel burned, again, because the ultimate goal here is to calculate the kilojoules per milliliter, that is, uh, the energy produced for uh, burning one milliliter of the alcohol. So we have the energy value. The volume we will calculate from the mass and the density. So the mass of fuel burned is the difference between the burner at the beginning and the burner at the end. So 86.15 grams minus 84.48 grams and this gives us 1.67 grams. Oops. So 1.67 grams and we're going to divide this by the density of methanol, which is 0 0.7913 grams per milliliter. And this gives us 2.11 milliliters. And we are now um, all set to calculate the fuel density, the energy density of the fuel, which is 21.1, 20.1 kilojoules per 2.11 milliliter of fuel burned, which gives us uh, 9.53 kilojoules per milliliter. And uh, again, this is for methanol, and which is roughly half of the theoretical value that we calculated at the beginning. So hope your lab went well and thank you for watching.